is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you on a quick video. I wanted to let you guys know I got some new merchandise available, not just t-shirt anymore. I got different type of t-shirt, different type of shirts and logos that you can purchase on my spread shirt and also hoodies now. We have expanded and added more to the channel and more merchandise for the brand. Thanks for supporting. It will be in the description and the links will be in the comment section below. Thanks for helping me and supporting the movement. Quinn Wade, Basketball Analysis. I'm going to check out the video. What is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade, Basketball Analysis. Coming to y'all with a quick video. We're going to do an update on Shea Gilgis Alexander, a guy who a lot of people felt can be a critical piece in the future of the Oklahoma City Thunder. And we know he got traded for guys like Paul George. And he's trying to replace Russell Westbrook as a star in Oklahoma. And he has a lot of pressure and a lot of hype to live up to because of those trades. And the fact that he's the young prospect that they got back outside of a lot of picks. And... Even though they got a lot of young players still in Oklahoma and they got a lot of players that can turn into solid starters if they not that already, Shea Gilgis most likely will be the guy that has the highest upside. Um, and he has really performed at a high level this year already. And he even surprised me because I thought he would be where he's at right now a couple years, probably two years early. But it just shows you that if you have that work ethic like we've done seen other players do, you can pan out a lot of your flaws quickly if you're willing to put in the work and you have the hunger and the will to be great and you love the game of basketball. you you excited to play. You want to play and you're doing whatever it takes to continue to get better. You can become and do whatever you want to be. Shea Gilgis was a guy that people thought couldn't shoot. They were, He was a guy that they thought wasn't the greatest passer wasn't the greatest defender. He was a guy that was just good at a lot of things, but not great at anything. And even though you look at his season so far, he's giving you 6.8 rebounds, three assists, one steal, 48% um, from the field, 36% from three. He still hasn't really shown that he's great at a particular area still at this point in time. But what he is showing you is that his offensive game has a higher ceiling than what we thought. Because nobody really seen Shea Gilgis as a 20-point scorer. Now, I'm not saying that Shea Gilgis would definitely average 20 points this season because he did get off to such a great start. That don't mean he's going to be able to do it all season. Plus, you look at this team. There's a lot of players on this team that could possibly be traded, that can possibly be gone by a trade deadline or before. And that's going to put more pressure and more, you know, scouting reports are going to be harder for um, Shea because he's not gonna have the talent to really help him balance it out because when you look at Sam Presti he's collecting picks he wants picks and players that's aspiring contracts so they can get out of the cap hill that he put them in and there's a lot of pieces on this team that are very tradable but if you're trading them for guys that don't want to be there or guys that's only going to be there for one season or guys that's not going to really make the team any better because you're just trying to lower your cap or trade the players just to get um, an asset back, um, Shea is going to be a guy that's going to really struggle because he's going to have all the attention and guys going to be preparing for him and guys going to try to take him out of his game and he might not have enough help. Right now, Shea Gilgis can do certain things that he couldn't do before, but he also have other players that give him floor spacing, that gives him screens, that allows him to get to his spots and get to the shots that he wants. That's one thing I really love about Shea is that he's playing at his own tempo and he's taking the shots that he's comfortable taking. He's not really being forced to do anything he doesn't want to and he's getting to the areas that he know he can make. Because if you look at last season, Shea Gilgis was a great mid-range player being able to knock down that 15 to 17 foot jump shot or even that floater or even knock down a couple spot of threes um, at the top of the key or in the corner. So he picked the right spots to knock down shots and master. I feel like he's taking more of those shots because he has the opportunity. When you look at the Clippers, they had Lou Williams and um, guys like Patrick Beverly that ate into a lot of those minutes, but also took more shots and allowed him not to get those shots. And I'm not saying Lou Williams stunning his growth, 
but we are able to see more of what Shea Gilgis can do because he has a bigger chance and a more opportunity on Oklahoma. And if that's the guy you want to develop and that's the guy you want to be a potential star, you have to give him time to shine and you have to give him time to showcase what he can do and build up his confidence because you only know if you can do it if you're actually doing it. And in that case, it's hard to say if Shea could or couldn't be this or that when he hasn't had the opportunity to do it. But when you look at Shea Gilders, another thing that's scary about what he's doing right now is the fact that he's only 21 and he won't be 22 until after the season. So that's a thing that's a strong positive is that this guy isn't even close to being in his prime. And he's showing you that he can be a productive player at worst. He can be a second or third star. And that's not that terrible of an idea because when you look at all of the pieces and, and, and assets that they have been able to collect, you can trade up in the draft. You can trade like they did for Paul George and Carmelo for another star when they become available to play with Shea Gilgis. I don't think anybody think Shea Gilgis can be the best player on a championship team. Now, I'm not saying that he can't, but when he was drafted and the way he has played so far, he doesn't look like a guy that can carry your offense and he doesn't look like a guy that can really take over games consistently. Um, and that may never be his game. But he has also shown that he has the work ethic and that has made him a lot better now. And now his ceiling is a lot higher than I thought because I told you guys, I think Shea Gilge is going to be a 25-5 and five guy. But he looks like a significantly better rebounder now than when he was a rookie or in college. He looks like a more willing playmaker and passer. He's not a great playmaker. He's not a great passer, but he is a guy that's still learning that role and still figuring it out. Plus, he still hasn't really had the ball in his hand enough um, like he did in the Clippers and like he's doing right now. He doesn't have to make those passes and those decisions on a consistent basis because he still does play a lot off the ball which means he can't really control the offense or the tempo of the game unless he's really the point guard, which he was drafted to be a big um, oversized point guard, but a lot of teams have used him in other ways. So I can't really decide how much of a improved passer he has become because he still hasn't really shown that ability to do it yet. I see what he can be, but 3.3 assists, that's not enough. And the fact that you look at he's getting 34 minutes and he only gave you 3.3 assists, but you look at the thing about that is he got 3.3 assists last year when he played 26 minutes for the Clippers. So if they do trade Chris Paul, somebody's going to have to run his offense. Will they use Dennis Schroeder or will they trade Dennis Schroeder and Chris Paul and just let Shane McGill just be their primary player and point guard that runs the offense, sets people up, and also gets a chance to play in some pick and roll, come off some screens and knock down some threes, some corner threes, and knock down some spot-up jump shots or even create the shot. His shot creation is ahead of time, and that's something that I thought that he would have to work on because when he came in the league, I didn't really see a place where he can be a guy that can get his own shot at a consistent basis. I'm not saying that he never could. He just didn't look like he can do it consistently enough when he was a rookie. And he has really, really improved his ability to handle the ball, get to his spots, and create an opportunity for himself. But I also want to see him do that as a passer. I want him to be able to break down the defense and make great passes, make good kickouts, collapse the defense, and put a lot of pressure on the defense. And he does probe very well, but he mostly probes as a scorer, not really probe as a guy that's trying to make the right pass. I think that those are things he needs to continue to work on. And if he gets the opportunity and the chance to be the full-time point guard, if that's what they want him to be, I think that it would be a exciting thing for him to do. And I think that that's something that will really take his game to another level and allow him 
to be an all-star in this league because he's already shown that he can be a 20-point scorer. But what else can you bring to the table? What else can you do? And I want to see if he can upgrade his defense. I think he's a solid defender right now. And I think that that's another thing that he can take his game to the next level. And as long as he got Chris Paul, one of the best point guard defenders in the NBA history, and a guy that made multiple all-NBA defensive team as a small little guard, Shea Gill just has a way better body, way better length. He has way better athleticism, in my personal opinion, and that's something that he can improve on in the future or even this season. That can really make him a valuable player and make him a way better prospect and player than we thought. At the end of the day, Shea Gilger showed that he's going to be a special player. He can be possibly a two-way player, and he's showing that he can probably run an offense in the future, and that's going to be the next step controlling the tempo, making his teammates around him better, making their job a lot easier, and making them feed off him. And then when they feed off him, he can feed off them and put the defense in just a frenzy and, and, and make people go crazy. But with his ability to handle the ball, knock down mid-range shots, play off the ball a little bit, and his basketball IQ is higher than I thought it would be, but that's just because he's putting in the work. So his ceiling is unlimited i thought he'd be a 25 and 5 guy it looks like his ceiling can be a lot higher than that and especially defensively now it's just about continuing to put in the work and if he can do that i don't see why he can't be one of the best players in the league in the future will he be the franchise guy will he be a superstar point guard honestly he has the tools and the ability it's just up to him and his team and putting them in the right position but also him getting the best out of his body and talent and that's something that i can't decide that's something that he has to do can't do i believe he can do it yeah because he's proven it now but at the same time he can't get he can't get um stagnant he has to continue to put in the work so far he has done that and i gotta give him credit for what he has done so far and what i've done seen but at the same time, it's a long journey. He's still got over 70 games to play, and he's still got over 10-plus years to play. But it is good to see how good he has gotten and how well he has been already. Let me know what you guys think about Shea and the Oklahoma City Thunder. And let me know, should he play two or should he be the one? Do you think that he really can be a franchise point guard that can be a starter on a championship team? Or do you think he can be the best player on this championship team? Or do he need to be more like a second or a third option on a championship team? But either way, Oklahoma City got them something special. And they still do have a lot of picks that they can help build around him um, in the future. And like I said, he's only 21. And he's going to be 22 after this season. So he's a guy that can be with you for the long haul. But he also can grow with other young players and rookies that you can possibly put around him. So he's in a good spot. And so is the Thunder. Let me know what you guys think, though. Like this video. Check out my older videos on my channel. I have many playlists. I break down rookies. I break down players. I break down summer league. I do cover the draft, and I got a mock draft up already. Not only that, I do podcasts, and I also talk about the game of basketball, whether it comes to summer league, free agency, trade deadline, buyouts, and also I cover top 10 discussions and stuff like that. So you like this type of video. You like the NBA. Check out my older videos and my playlists. I enjoy making these videos. You guys enjoy watching. I'm 